Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and join me today for a funeral of sorts. Where today we're talking about the death of the Urho 3D game engine. Kinda. Sorta. Okay, this one gets confusing, so let's just jump in and find out what the heck we're talking about. First, you may be wondering what an Urho 3D is. It's a game engine, open source, uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux, uh, available for a number of different platforms in terms of targeting, including iOS, the web, etc. Uh, it is mostly C++ based on the back end, but you can develop using uh, AngelScript or the Lua programming language. Uh, it is an interesting project for sure, and if you are very code-focused in what you are interested in, uh, it, it could be a good one for you to check out. And, it, well, it might have been. So I did this back again in 2014. So why are we talking about it in the past tense? Well, if you head on over to Urho 3D right now, what you will notice is a lot of Russian. Uh, so the comments now are in Russian. The project now is in Russian. Uh, this is now a Russian project. And there is this fellow named Ivan or, or one van Ke. Uh, and Ivan here uh, sort of hijacked the project from the looks of things. Now, this is how it was explained to me from people on the one side of the equation, and I've got no reason to, to think that they're lying because we have this very publicly archived conversation kind of about what happened here, and the GitHub page was blown away, the English one. Uh, it was uh, backed up, but a guy here, I can't believe what you've done to the project, and then he's kind of like, you didn't like my contributions, you can piss off, basically. Uh, and then it came back here is, uh, no, people are fine with what you did. People are unhappy because you took over the Urho 3D organization. You removed its two founders, Lassie, uh, Lassie, sorry, Lassie, uh, and Wei Chong, or Wei Chong, uh, and replaced Urho 3D with your personal project. Uh, you may as well rename it because the Russian version isn't Urho 3D anymore. If it's not in English, it is not Urho 3D. The change is just too fundamental. Uh, it may be a good project, but it is a different project. And then there's other people that contributed to this project that chime in here as well. Now, some of these people have definitely moved on are no longer working with the project and don't really care that much. Uh, and then other people, obviously, that are working with it are not too happy here as well. We've got another guy that piped in here as well. Uh, same kind of concept, basically. Um, it, it's He's going to kill the project by making it Russian only for a variety of reasons right there. So he thinks it is dead, but this guy's actually working on a fork of it, which we'll talk about in just a second. So he's working on a .NET 6 fork of it. Um, and then, as you may be able to tell, and I'm not going to get into the politics of it, uh, but here is Ivan's uh, comment on things. And you kind of get an idea of perhaps the... the the reasoning behind this split. And uh, yeah, it's basically if you were working with Orho before, uh, Ivan just basically turned it Russian only. However, you do have a number of different options. Uh, one that I mentioned earlier on very briefly was uh, Elix's uh, Orho.net port. So this is to make a C-sharp game engine that is built on top of uh, the Orho 3D project. This was started well before the the schism happened. Uh, the only thing you're going to find is this is a one-man project, and it, it hasn't had a commit yet this calendar year. Uh, so it hasn't had a commit in... Uh several months now, three months. So that is always a little uh, disconcerting for sure, especially when you don't really have contributors on it. So I don't think that you can expect a whole lot out of this project. It's not going to be uh, the big one going forward. But if you're interested in using Urho 3D, but you want to use it with C Sharp, you have Urho.net. And he does say that he is going to keep working on it. So we will see if there are new commits in the future. However, there are two other options. If you want to keep using Urho Engine, uh, the first one we've got here is U3D. Now, that name is, um, actually, I, I swore it was already used, but um, it, it's a little on the generic side. I get why they turned Urho 3D into U3D. Uh, and this is kind of a sales pitch of what the engine is all about. So if you've never been exposed to Urho 3D before, you get a bit of an idea what it can do. Procedural animation. It's got AI stuff built in. It's got a physics engine built in. It does have a full-blown editing environment with a train editor, a scene browser, and a content browser all built in as well. Uh, it is free and open source. Again, there is that built-in editor. You've got an asset workflow that includes things like FB X and Collada support, as well as MB3 and MB5 support. Uh, multiplayer is built in there as well. There is scripting in the form of AngelScript and Lua, and you can also develop for Linux, Mac, Windows, Android, iOS, tvOS, Raspberry Pi, and the web. So this one, U3D, is basically Orho 3D, where they just kind of continued the development. So this is the closest thing we have to uh, a continuation of things as they were. Uh, now, it is an open source project. It is under the MIT license. Uh, it's three weeks since the last commit. I don't know uh, how develop how active development is ultimately going to be um but this is the closest thing you have to people trying to basically keep urho 3d going as it was 
Now, this one in terms of contributors, you're looking at about eight contributors right now. It's early on, so it'll be interesting to see uh, if a community forms behind Urho 3D. Um, but this is the closest thing, again, to if you want to have a straight continuation and you're using Urho as it was, you want to use it again going forward, U3D is the project that you are most interested in. Now, they're actually thinking about doing a rename, uh, a refactoring in the code to turn Urho 3D in the code, the namespaces, macros, etc., from Urho 3D to U3D. And like most of the comments here said, uh, probably a bad idea because it's going to break huge amounts of backward compatibility. And if you're trying to be the forward compatible fork of a legacy game engine, this is probably not a good idea. Although I do understand the reasoning behind it. The other one that you're probably interested in is the Rebel Fork framework. Now, this is an experimental fork of Orho 3D, still MIT licensed. And this one is trying to make it more uh, up to date. Uh, keep it going, add some new functionality. One of the interesting things here is they're also looking at adding uh, optional C-sharp bindings. So like the Urho.net, hopefully you can get uh, some C-sharp support there. Now, I think Urho.net is more of a port to .NET, whereas this one is a set of bindings or compatibility layers so you could script with C-sharp. So if you want to use this, why would you want to use Rubble Fork? Well, it's a code-first framework with full control over code execution, unlike Unity, like Game Edge with an IDE-first approach. Uh, it is portable and relatively lightweight framework that can be used like any other third-party dependency, unlike huge mainstream game engines. It's a fork of a mature and stable Orho 3D, which has been around since 2011, more feature-rich and well-tested than many of the new non-mainstream game engines out there. And if you already, already use your Orho 3D, you may want to try this framework if you liked Orho 3D, but are unsatisfied with the current your Orho 3D feature set, and well, you don't speak Russian. Uh, so I think this may have been slightly before I, th I think this is older than uh the death of urho uh but now it's kind of become even more of a prominent option out there and why you wouldn't want to use it is if you're not really code focused don't want to write code uh you need to have cutting edge graphics or AAA games again this is a d3d9 renderer or opengl so i don't think there's any direct 3d12 or vulcan you're not going to get support for things like um fxr or dlss etc in this engine at least not as of yet uh, if you're perfectly happy with Urho, I think this is outdated now. So now I think it would say if you're perfectly happy with Urho and you can speak Russian, uh, this is just keep using Urho. And you want to use Urho, but for C Sharp, in which case Urho.net may be a better fit or just any of the other C Sharp engines out there. Now, this one is kind of the, probably the most interesting because first off, it has the most recent commits. And second off, it also has um, the most contributors by quite a large margin. So I wouldn't be surprised that RBFX ultimately going forward is the English successor to the Urho 3D crown, if you will. Uh, but I'm interested in what you think. Have you ever heard of Urho before? Uh, if so, were you involved in this schism? Uh, which of the ports are you most interested in? If not, are you got any interest in checking any of these things out? Let me know all of these things in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. But to the original Urho 3D, rest in peace, my uh, angry Finnish fish. Uh, you've had a, a long legacy, and hopefully one of your heirs lives on. Let me know what you think. Comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.